Ubuntu is an incredibly popular operating system for hackers and Linux users alike. Today, we'll look into how we can harden it for accessing the internet and exposing the minimum amount of attack surface on this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. After setting up Ubuntu securely in our previous guide, we have a system that's minimal, lean, and has an encrypted hard drive so that it's mostly resistant to things like physical attacks. The next step comes when we want to actually join a network, which means we're going to be up against all sorts of attacks and threats which might start with a little bit of recon by scanning our device. Now the best way to reduce our attack surface is to make sure that to someone scanning our device, it looks like something it's not, or something that's really unattractive, so that we're not getting anyone who's trying to break into our machine because we're not really giving them enough information to decide to attack it in the first place. Now of course that could mean something like spoofing your MAC address, but today we'll also get into things like restricting firewall uh, applications from being able to actually access the internet so that we can tell what's accessing the internet and then set firewall rules to restrict anything that we don't like. Now we'll go into a couple other steps, and if you get confused, you can also check out the awesome article written by Tokyo Neon, which is linked in the description. Once you have your Ubuntu set up and ready to go, we can start setting this up, but I will warn you, we will get into some network restrictions that can cut off your access to the internet. So you might want to make sure that you have the article loaded up if you're going to be following this guide, because if it goes a little bit too far and cuts you off from the internet, it might be a little bit frustrating to try to find the instructions retroactively. Now I'm going to go ahead and power up my virtual machine. However, while I do so, I'm going to show you Tokyo Neon's Oh, whoa, if it lets me. There we go. I'm gonna go ahead and show you Tokyo Neon's Twitter, and I highly recommend you follow him because he has all kinds of great guides, and this is just one in a larger series of amazing guides on how to keep yourself safe while using a really fun and easy to use system. Now, Ubuntu is a great way to get started, and we're gonna be following this guide today. So if you want to follow along, you can check out the Nullbyte article in the description and follow Tokyo Neon on Twitter, because all of his guides are great, and I think you'll find them very useful. Now, to get started, we're going to open up our Ubuntu system that we created in the last guide. And again, this can either be a virtual machine, or this can be a, a dual-booted system. It's really entirely up to you. For me, I'm running a virtual device, so I'm going to go ahead and connect both Ethernet and a, a Wi-Fi adapter. But uh, it looks like one of them didn't take, but hopefully the second one does. All right, so the first step of what we're going to do is go into the Wi-Fi settings. And what you'll notice is there's actually the ability to add a cloned MAC address. Now, if somebody is scanning a network and they're trying to figure out if you have a certain kind of uh, device, they're going to have the MAC address to rely on because the MAC ad address is derived basically from whoever manufactures your computer or your wireless card. So if somebody's looking for a uh, Lenovo laptop or a particular kind of chipset because they have an exploit for it, or if they want to know if you're like an Apple device, then it's really easy to do so if you are scanning for MAC addresses and manage to match them to uh, a particular manufacturer. Now here you can see I have this particular MAC address for our actual MAC address, which would lead back to probably a virtual machine. But because I want to hide that information, I want to use this clone MAC address of AABBCCDDEEDD. So I'm going to go ahead and click apply. And then this should apply our spoof MAC address to the system so that if anybody is trying to search for us uh, on the network, we're going to look like a very, very confusing device. Now, if we go ahead and open a terminal window, and let me see if I can make this a little bigger. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna open up a terminal window, and in order to go ahead and check this out, I'm going to type netstat, tac, NTPUL. Oops, whoa. Okay, and as you can see, we don't have it. 
So the first step to actually run this tool is to follow the advice here and run apt install net tools. Oh, I got to sudo it. So net tools has a whole bunch of different things. And if you're ever running ifconfig and notice that it just doesn't work, net tools is a package in which it is contained. So if you just install that, then it will generally have all the Kelly Linux tools that you know and love, such as ifconfig and apparently the one I just tried to type, which is netstat tack ntpul. There we go. Okay. So now we have some more information. We can see a little bit more about the services that are open on our device. And this gives us an indication of if we have any particular risk factors for something interacting with our machine that we don't want to happen. Now, we can do a couple things to prevent somebody from maybe starting to mess with these services that are open, but once we're aware of them, that's kind of the first step to being able to remove anything that we don't want interacting with uh, our actual system. Now, again, if you're not using a printer over the network, there's probably no reason to be constantly li listening for that sort of thing or to give somebody information about your computer. Um, if, they're, if they happen to be scanning for printer protocols and be like, oh, this is a new Ubuntu printer protocol listening on this port. So let's type in system CTL disable cups browsed. We'll need to type in our password. And it hates it. Let me see. Let me try sudo. There we go. Now we should be able to cut down on the number of things that are listening on various ports. And this will greatly prevent uh, anybody from being able to learn about our system so that we're not actually having to uh, worry about enumeration on our device that could lead to somebody sending an Ubuntu exploit our way, or maybe a printer protocol exploit our way. Now, the next thing we're gonna do, uh, I was just thinking ahead on my system might be a little complicated because I'm actually using an Apple device, but we're going to disable the uh, daemon that basically allows us to communicate with Apple protocols. And again, if you're going to be using your Ubuntu with Apple devices, this might be something that you wanna leave enabled, but for security's sake, if we want to really lock down our system, we can type sudo systemctl, disable av, a H I dash Damon. There we go. So now we might not be able to communicate with Apple devices anymore, but the nice thing is that we can actually use a firewall to protect ourselves from any further, uh, maybe, let's say a nefarious connection that's uh, coming out of our box or one that's trying to come in. So we've made a couple trade-offs. This is starting to get, again, a little bit uh, hardcore for people who might be interacting with a bunch of devices all the time and not worry as much security. But if you are focused on security, then these steps do give you the ability to scale them forwards and back, depending on your level of comfort. So let's go ahead and use a firewall to actually start taking charge of what's going on with our system. And we're gonna start to be pretty heavy handed. So let's do sudo ufw enable okay so the firewall is active and enabled on system startup so this is basically this is called the uncomplicated firewall it's designed for us to be able to enter in a couple really really easy commands and basically be able to do some pretty serious stuff when it comes to monitoring and selectively allowing or denying connections. So let's start out by doing sudo ufw default. Whoa, let me get rid of this. Default deny forward. Well, let's start with incoming. Okay, so now our incoming policy for incoming connections is to deny them. Let's go ahead and deny forwarding. And let's, uh, while we're at it, also deny outgoing. And there you go. The perfect computer. Nothing in, nothing out. It's locked down. You're done.
Just kidding. Okay, if you ever want to connect to the internet again, we do have some steps that we actually need to do. Uh, so one thing we can do is type ifconfig, tack a, and that should give us information about our wireless interfaces uh, or our interfaces in general, uh, ethernet or wireless. Here you can see information about our uh, wireless card. So in order to use the next commands, we're going to need to know the name of our wireless network adapter. And as you can see, it's really long, so that's great. So I'm going to switch over to the article here and the actual commands we're going to be using are a little bit long. So I'm gonna see if I can uh, use in my virtual machine, the shared clipboard, bidirectional, and hopefully I'll be able to copy these over. Although if not, I won't be surprised. So this is the command we're going to need to copy. It is sudo uncomplicated firewall, allow out on our interface name. And we're going to go ahead and change in a second our DNS to the Cloudflare DNS of 1111. So the rest of this uh, will basically just allow our exceptions for DNS queries. And I'm gonna go ahead and copy this. And I really hope it comes out in our Ubuntu virtual machine. Let's see if it does. And of course it doesn't. That is the worst. All right, well, I get to write this whole thing out just like you. It's gonna be fun. All right, let's do this. Okay, sudo. Oh, okay, I can't see it that way. And the best part is if I wanted to open this on a, um, in a browser and do it here, I just disallowed all network connections. So there's no way it would work. So we got to do this. All right, sudo ufw allow out on this horribly long network adapter. Where is it? There we go. All right, so we'll copy this, drop that in. So we created our exception for the network adapter. Let's keep this going. Two, one. Oh. One, 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 proto UDP port 53 comments. And this is going off the side. And of course, this is just a comment. I can see that, but I'm going to do it anyway. So I remember what this is for. All right, let's run this and see what happens. So we're going to try to create this firewall rule that allows us to make DNS queries, which will be very helpful if we want to go anywhere on the internet. Okay, it worked. So now we can copy a lot of this over. All the first part is going to be the same. Uh, we are going to change part of it to uh, any. So we're going to say, rather than just this one DNS resolver, any IP address, uh, we're going to say uh, it's a TCP connection instead of UDP. We're going to say port 80. And this is for HTTP. Whoa. All right, and the last one, I'm gonna expand this again because now I don't have to copy this anymore. Oh, get over here. There, it's very long. All right, so we'll run that. And the last one is port 443. And that is going to be for HTTPS. Awesome. All right, so now stuff is still not gonna work. Basically the default DNS is going to be set. We're gonna have to go ahead and go in and set it ourselves if we actually want this to work. Now we'll go back to the Wi-Fi settings. And in the same menu that we were in before, 
we can click through until we see, there we go, DNS. So let's go ahead and type 1111, hit apply. And that should be everything we need to get everything working on our uh, outbound connect, inbound outbound connections um, through our DNS exception that we just set up. So basically what we've done now is by default, locked pretty much everything down, but we've only allowed our wireless network adapter to go out on port 80 and port 443. Now, of course, this can get very, uh, very restrictive if uh, you are having a hard time with this or you find that it's just not working at all. You can always type sudo ufw default allow outgoing. So, okay, that will go ahead and make these rules a little bit less restrictive, but of course you're going to want to actually check to see if there's anything that is trying to get out, um, or uh, if you have a particular program that is just failing, you might want to know why it's doing so by exploring with the log. So you can go ahead and type tail, tack f, slash ver, slash log, slash ufw dot log, and you should be able to see various things that were blocked, various things that were allowed, and kind of like what's going on in terms of whether or not there's a device that's a perf oh, not a device, a uh, whether or not there's a service that's persistently trying to connect to a certain IP address. Now, if you find something that is persistently trying to connect back to an IP address you don't recognize, or if the, uh, that IP address looks suspicious, you should definitely maybe have cause for concern that your computer has been compromised, and this is a great way that you could catch something that somebody else might not notice. After all, most malware actually requires a command and control server in order to operate. So if you're able to detect that sort of behavior, it could be a first warning sign that your computer has been breached. Now, if you run into a program that is broken or something like that, you can always fix it with some with a command that goes like sudo uh, ufw allow out on and then our hideously long wireless network adapter name from, let's say, this IP address to this IP address. And that could be, you know, some program that we're trying to run that's just, oops, that's just getting stuck and cannot, can't communicate with the resource that it needs. Uh, we'll also write, P, let's see, P-R-O-T-O, T-C-P, port, and it looks like this was trying to connect to, well, it doesn't matter. Let's just say 9999. And of course it helps to use a U instead of a W. There we go. So you can go ahead and type man UFW if you want to see more information about how to set these rules. But basically, if you want to start getting more customized or strict with the way that your computer actually handles these sorts of connections, you can set your own rules to prevent command and control servers. You can lock down individual processes. It really is as complicated or as simple as you want to make it. And I highly recommend you look into this if you want to take a more hands-on approach to your device being able to lock down its connections. Now, Hopefully, let's see, I should be able to access the internet after making some exceptions. And I'm gonna try to do this on my network and then show you guys one of my favorite tools. Let's see if it works. Yeah, all right, success. We have successfully created firewall exceptions. So the last step is to use a VPN of some sort. Now, VPNs are a really good way to prevent local sniffing. So even if somebody gets the IP or the uh, password to the network that you're on and starts sniffing the traffic, they still won't be able to detect what you're doing. And that goes for your internet service provider as well. Basically, all anyone will see is a bunch of encrypted garbage because your service, uh, your connection is actually being piped over to a different endpoint. And you can choose to do that pretty much anywhere in the world. Now, Mulvad is my VPN of choice. And I really like it because it's a fast way of just hiding your connection. And they also, you can just mail them a check full of cash <laughs> if you want to uh, as a method of payment. They accept Bitcoin and a bunch of other stuff. Although I know there's a lot of people that like uh, private internet access, PIA. 
And there's a lot of other good VPNs out there as well. I recommend you do your own research, but for beginners, I think Pia is a really great service. And for people who uh, wanna just mail in an envelope full of cash, uh, Mulvad is a really cool and interesting service that I encourage you guys to check out. So that is how you can lock down your Ubuntu computer. It's also how you can protect your local connection on pretty much any computer with a service that uh, offers a VPN connection that you like and trust. Because the most important thing to remember is that while a VPN connection may be secure, it always comes down to whether or not you trust the service that's running it. So services like ProtonVPN uh, are also known for being uh, secure and people trust them, uh, but the uh, Mulvad service and then Pia are both perfectly trustworthy as well. In my view, I would recommend you do your own research. The steps we've taken on your Ubuntu device today will minimize its attack surface when it's connected to a network. But don't take that to mean that the network security is perfect or that we've solved any number of problems that can come along from doing something like opening a malicious application. Now in the next guide, we'll actually take on sandboxing applications and restricting them from doing things that might be malicious. But today, we've taken care of things like anonymizing our box, making sure that we take care of any services we're not using, and all in all taking a look at the attack surfaces we can remove without stripping away too much function. Now if any of this went too far, you can also check out the Nullbyte article in the description to maybe walk back that firewall description if you can manage to get to the internet after you set it up. That's all we have for this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you have any ideas for future episodes, send me a message on Twitter because I'd love to hear from you. We'll see you next time.